Welcome to the sixth and final video of the endotracheal intubation video series. Today we are going to talk about confirming the depth of ET tube with chest x-ray as well as how to document this procedure in the patient's chart. Please make sure to watch the whole video series in order and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet. Let's start. So the depth of ET tube always related to the carina. The very first step in determining the right depth of, or the proper depth of the ET tube is trying to identify the carina. The carina where the right main stem and the left main stem uh, bronchi, right? It's very important to find the carina. Sometimes it's very easy, like in this x-ray, this is there is no ET tube just to show you. We can see probably the left main stem right here. So I can guess the carina will be right here. So that's one way and sometimes it's very easy to um, find it. The other way is called D way. And basically, uh, as you see here, do you find the arch of the aorta? And you draw this line inferomedially with midline you have 45 degree so you get this is the carina right here again if even if i didn't have this line i can see that the left main stem right here and probably the right main stem will be right here so that's another way so it's very important to find to locate the carina because that is how you're going to tell if the et tube is too deep like here or it's too high here like for example look at this et tube here see the et tube here this is the fine line remember et tube is it's translucent but it has a strip of radio opaque material so we can identify it on the x-ray you see this line coming all the way down here stop here this is the carina here so this is probably around five centimeter but as i said it's very important to lo locate the carina first that's very important look at the carina and look at the tube and see how high or low the et tube from the carina as you know we always say we want the et tube to be around we said that two to three centimeter above the carina but you will see some people saying five centimeter is okay but again, this depends on the position of the head during the x-ray shot, right? So they're saying if the head is flexed, the ET tube will go down, will appear low or lower by 2 cm. If it's extended, I'm talking about the head of the patient, the ET tube will look higher by 2 cm. What do I mean? If this patient was flexed, let's say his head flexed, and repeat the x-ray, the ET tube will be looking down here by two centimeters. It will look lower by two centimeters. If it's extended, it will look higher by two centimeters. It looks like here. So it's very important to make sure that the chest x-ray is done in what we call neutral position. And most chest x-ray are done in neutral position because most of these intubated patients are sedated, right? Now, regardless, if you're not sure, the minimum safe distance between the tip of the ET tube right here and the carina right here should be at least two centimeters or two to three centimeters. So whatever the position, if it is less than two centimeters, then we need to pull the ET tube up. And if it's higher than, let's say, and usually if I see it at the level of the clavicle here, I just tell them to advance it. And it's rough estimate. So the, most of the X-ray softwares, they have rulers that you can measure the distance accurately, but you can use your rough estimate as well. So let's see some real chest X-rays for real patients and comment on the ET tube positions in those patients. Okay, let's start with the first X-ray. Looks ugly, huh? Let's find the carina first. As I said, I can see right here the carina. I can see the right main stem and left main stem. I again, it's rough. It's it's looking. It's a difficult X-ray, but the carina right here, the tip of the ET tube right here. And if you apply the D way, this is the aortic arch. You can draw this line here, this way, and this way. 
and 45 degree right here okay my rough estimate the coron is here the tip is here and we're looking probably to between here and here around what two centimeters at least uh, on the side this is a central line this is a right ij central line looks in good position there is severe subcutaneous emphysema okay diffuse bilateral infiltrate as well and if you see this here coming down all the way here this is the uh, og or ng tube and it's going below the diaphragm i cannot see the tip of course but it's not in the lungs and a lot of wires here leads probably okay this looks much better huh so let's locate the carina again my guessing the carina will be below this opaque material here if i want to use the aortic arch things probably i'm talking again about the same area here i think the right main stem here and left main stem here the et tube tip is right here see is right here and the carina is right here so barely we took about two centimeters so to be on the safe side i can pull it up by one centimeter and um, looks the position of the head is neutral to be safe i can pull it up by one centimeter now on the side you see this line here this is a swan catheter you see it's going all the way through the right ij then right atrium right ventricle into the pulmonary arteries and i suspect this device here is an impeller device see it's sitting right here see the tip here in the left ventricle and i think also you could see this uh, fine line here is going all the way i'm tracking it tracking it tracking it it's going all the way below the diaphragm and this is an ng tubes yeah, you could see a an opacity here and again this could be fusion looks like more of a telectasis and there is some vascular congestion or um, interstitial increase interstitial marking on both lungs okay so again finding the Quran you can easily see that this is the left main stem and the right main stem here so the carina probably will be here the tip of the ET tube is here so roughly again you're talking about two centimeters and the size you see this catheter it looks like a dialysis catheter because it's a large bore catheter you see also this fine um, line here or this tube this is again an NG tube and you see diffuse bilateral infiltrate on both lungs again, another bad x-ray but again to look at the carina you could see here the trachea and you see here going right main stem and left main stem this is the carina and at least we're having three centimeters so this is a safe margin uh, again the head seems tilted or rotated toward the right of the patients and on the side you see again this ng tube going all the way down diffuse bilateral infiltrate and i think there is also consolidation on both lungs a lot of leads and wires of course let's find the carina i think the carina is right here left main stem and right main stem this is the et tube and it sees barely entering the right main stem so it's still there is some air going to the left main stem and probably going to the left upper lobe but look at the left lower lobe is not receiving much air and it's collapsed so this is and if i can say an early right main stem bronchus if you push it a little bit down by one centimeter or two the whole left lung will become white so it's very important to pull it back by three centimeter i want to put it right here or even four centimeter and repeat the chest x-ray so that's why it's really important to follow up daily x-ray on these intubated patients or at least make sure you listen to them every day making sure there is equal breath sounds now let's talk about how to document this procedure in the patient chart what's documented is simply a description of the procedure including failed attempts and any complications any procedure note should mention the following the name of the procedure date and time indications procedure description and your follow-up plan let's say an et tube then you follow it up with a chest x-ray now let me show you a sample of endotracheal intubation proper documentation
Now, finally, we come to the end of this video series, but we're not done yet. Your patient now technically is on mechanical ventilation, right? Is intubated now on mechanical ventilation. So how comfortable are you managing mechanical ventilation? No worries. If you're not comfortable with that, I will provide you the link to my course of mechanical ventilation from a beginner to pro level. You don't have to be an experience. It'll take you from a beginner mindset to a professional level in managing mechanical ventilations. I'll see you next video.